Greetings and welcome to this installment of Introduction to Solid Modeling using SolidWorks. And we have already built a saw and we have built the handle and shaft and assembled them of the screwdriver. But now we can make the bits to the screwdriver. This one is particularly simple. So I'm just going to walk you through what I did. I'm not going to show you everything step by step. You should be able to complete these steps all on your own. This is obviously a flathead insert to the screwdriver. Simple hex there and it is about an inch long but we're doing things in millimeters for this project. So I'm going to show you the overall here. Started with a hex extruded it, then we cut half of the tip off, and then we mirrored that, and then we simply made a fillet. So I'll go back to this extrusion here and show you the sketch. Obviously we started with a hex on that. And it made it six and a half on a side. And that's all we had to do. This was the tough part. This is the cut extrude. First thing we had to find the, a good plane. In this case, I used the front plane. And I sketched this out. And it's kind of hard to see against the dark metal that I made this into, so I'm going to change the style here. And all I made were three lines, actually two line segments and an arc. So I started with the arc and made sure that my center point was right in line with this so that my arc would finish up at this point going 90 degrees to this line and that's simply done by making sure that this line and the center are coincident like that. So I used my arc tool, put the center here, put the point here, put the other point here and I was pretty much done. Then I simply made two line segments going from this part of the arc to the corner, from here down to here, and then I just dimensioned from this line to this point, changed it to 10.7, and then made sure that I used a center line here because I wanted a one millimeter thick flat head at the very tip. So I just dimensioned that to the center line making sure the center line was going through the origin and used it like a diameter dimension. But it's not a diameter dimension. It simply keeps things symmetric without a whole lot of work. Okay, that was the hard part, if there was a hard part here. I'm going to go back to shaded view. All right, next step, created the mirror. Simply chose mirror found the correct plane. In this case it was the right plane and selected just this one feature and mirrored over to the other side. So any changes that go on to the one side will immediately be reflected in the other. Then I just filleted all the sharp edges here and that's with a 0.4 millimeter radius to match the other part that we're going to do. Now that part, the Phillips head, that's going to take some work. So let's go there now. Okay, here's our Phillips head insert. And this does look a lot more complex. In fact, for such a small part, it's going to be a lot more work than we've done so far. So here are all features that we need to use for this. What I did first is I started off with a similar hex, but then notice what I did next. I made four planes. 
I'm going to show them to you. Next, I made four planes. So I didn't even make any uh, solid parts here. Then I made a whole bunch of sketches. And you'll see those sketches attached to these lofts. 3, 4, 5, 7, 5, 7, 8 here. That's where all this geometry comes in. And then the rest is fillets. So let's learn how to make this happen. As I mentioned, the first step is to make that hex. So I'm going to start with the right plane. I'm going to sketch a hex. And there's my right plane. So this is going to be similar to the start of the other one. Notice that I'm in millimeters right now. And all I have to do is hit escape, make this one here horizontal, and everything turns black. Okay, so there's that sketch. Now I'm going to go to Features, Extruded Boss Base. I'm going to select the only sketch I have. I want it to go the other way, to be blind. And on the drawing, you can see that section goes for 12.7 millimeters, or half an inch. Okay, I'm going to start doing more sketches from this face. What I want to do next is make all of my planes. So I'm going to go to Reference Geometry, Plane. I'm going to make an offset plane from here. So when you're making a plane, there are different ways of making a plane. For example, you could have three points, and you could put them right in here. One, two, three, and those three points would determine that plane. Or you can just click on one plane here and say, yeah, I want that plane to be exactly offset of that face. Bam, and it's fully defined. So if it's 10 millimeters from that face in that direction, then it's fully defined. Now I could make a um, edge. Here, let me delete that. I'm going to make this edge. And this point down here. Okay, there's another plane. So now that's fully defined between an edge and a vertex. So there's a variety of ways of making these planes. But I'm going to delete that. I'm going to put that in there. And we are going to make this, according to the diagram, 1.3 millimeters offset. Okay, let me just go through more of these planes. And the next one is 3.2 for cross section B. Oh, I don't want the plane 1 to be my reference here, so I want it to be all of these are offset from this surface here. So make sure you choose the right face there, otherwise it's going to look a little funny and be wrong. And then my third plane will be, according to the diagram, 8.4 off, but we're still basing it all off of that surface there. Uh, tried doing two of them, so I'm going to make sure I select that, delete it, then choose that plane. There we go. 8.4 off of that face one. And then last but not least, 11.8 millimeters. Not plane three. Want face one. And it should be 11.8 millimeters from there. OK, so I have defined four planes. And on each of these planes, I'm going to make cross sections. From those cross sections, I'm going to create lofts. According to our diagram here, our first cross section will actually be the hex. This part is not too bad as long as you break it down into its pieces here. So for my first sketch, 
I'm going to make sure I'm in sketch mode and I want to select this plane. And I'll use convert entities. And I'll just click on that. Very simple. All those edges. And my sketch is done. Not that bad. Okay, the next one is simply a circle. So I'm going to go to plane one and choose sketch. And I'll go to circle. And I'm just going to show you that you can uh, sketch a circle on that plane even if you're not facing it straight on. So I selected the center here, right on the origin. And I just dimension it to what we're given here, which is 4.95 millimeters. And that one's done. For my third sketch of the loss, I'm going to click on plane two. I'm going to go change my orientation so that I can draw it like this. And I want it to be the same size as the other circle. So, is, and maybe it's a little bit easier to draw it the wrong size, and then just make them co-radial. And there they are. So, there's my third sketch. Okay. One of the things that might be uh, troublesome for you is that you forget to hit exit sketch, and then you forget to click on a new plane. So make sure that you're not retracing over one of the old sketches because that's going to do you no good. Make sure you uh, hit exit sketch and then click on a new plane and then go back to sketch. So that should help you out. My next sketch is going to be one of the more difficult ones. It's going to be the larger cruciform or cross looking thing. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to make yet another circle. That's what we're going to base this off of. And that co-radial comes up. Oh, I'll start making a new one. So I'm just going to hit escape. And then the co-radial did not come up like I wanted it to. That's okay. I'll make it that way. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make some center lines. Okay, get another center line here across there. Okay, now that's going to help in a couple of different ways, but for now I'm just going to sketch these additional lines that are going to form the basis of my cross. Okay, I don't have any dimensions on here yet. I'll put them in right now. Uh-oh, what happened here? Okay, I'm getting an angular dimension. That's not what I wanted. Oh, the problem is that this line is vertical, but this line is not. So it's a little bit sloppy in how I put them in. So I'm going to make this vertical. It's not going to be happy. I'll just click on that dimension and put it away. Now I can dimension this and came almost up with the original intent which is 1.27. I'm going to make these symmetric. Okay, I'm going to make these symmetric.
Okay, I'm going to start trimming away here. I know it still has some blue parts, but I've got a reason for my intentions here. So I'm going to cut that part and that part. Cut those parts away, cut those parts away, and cut those parts away. Now I'm going to have a little bit of fun putting the center line here. And then making this point and this point symmetric about that center line. And voila, these turn black. And they are the same distance apart from each other as these ones. And all I ended up with was one dimension. So I'm going to cut that cut that, cut that, and cut that. And I have a lot of relations, but only one dimension, and it actually looks pretty good. And there is my larger cruciform sketch. Again, I exited sketch. I'm going to click on plane four, go to sketch again, now for my smaller cruciform sketch. And this one is actually defined exactly as a cross. I'm going to make two boxes, one like this and one like this. I'm going to trim out everything on the inside. I'm going to put that on there, this point on here, I'm going to make some center lines, little hint for you if you want to do the last thing you just did. So here where I was making center lines, I just hit escape to get out and I hit enter to get right back into it. This and this and this center line can be symmetric. Notice how this line is automatically made collinear with this one. So now these two are symmetric as well. And this, this, and this are all symmetric. Okay, time to put some dimensions in. And according to our drawing. This is 0.51 and from here to here up here is 0.76. Now these two didn't get into uh, full definition because only these points are on this line here. So I can either try to do the same thing or I can simply say going to make that line and that line equal and then I'm all set. Again, a lot of relations indicating that this is what I intend and simply two dimensions that help control the size that I really want. Okay. Well, that is half the hard part. These are my five cross sections that I'm going to use for my lofts. Now, part of the trouble of making lofts is that um, you often want to do all of it all at once. So I'm going to show you how that works or in some cases doesn't work. Simply take a lofted boss base and you look at these profiles. And 
all you have to do is click on each one of them. Two, three, four, five. Okay then. And this looks a little funny. Not quite what we were hoping for, huh? Well, that is how these lofts work. They don't usually do what you want them to right off the bat. So you have to go back into the loft and go to Edit Feature. Now notice these control points. On a good day, you will want to loft sections that just change in size. But we are here going from a hex to a circle, to another circle, to a cruciform with curves, to another cruciform that only has straight lines. Uh, so this is not exactly ideal. Notice these green points. These green points are control points. They will help determine what path it takes. And that's why it has this crazy curvy shape right now. What I want to do is I want to make sure that these control points are all at about the same plane. But it's very difficult to do when you have different shapes. Now notice how that is a little bit better. So it would be great if each one of these points would be on this plane right across here. But notice I'm having a very difficult time getting this one to behave and this one as well. If I get out of doing the loft and then I get back into it, you will see that a whole bunch of other control points show up, these light blue ones. These green ones are good, but the light blue ones also can help but they can also make things more complicated. So you can play around with this if you want to, but I highly recommend uh, saving your work first because these can make things kind of crazy. Another thing you should know about are the start and end constraints. The start and end constraints are at default, but I can start off with a normal to profile. So that means it's going to come straight out of the hex. Let's see what happens there. Okay. Notice how here it's now coming straight out of the hex. If I undo that, it doesn't come straight out of the hex. It comes down at some uh, angle that it calculates in terms of the default. So there are many, many settings that you can change on this to make it look good or not so good. This is one of the reasons that you see in my original that I made three different lofts. I did not try to do all of them at once. I did the hex and the two circles first. Okay. And I'm trying to keep it simple here. So I'm going to go back in here, edit the feature, and look at it from the side here. There we go. I'm wrestling with it there. Now all these other ones are coming into play and they are not being very helpful. All right, well, I'm gonna keep it at this for a second and you'll see how the loft shape has generally improved here, but not without a lot of effort. There are better ways of doing this by making specific points on the circle. So let's go to that sketch and see if we can't make that happen. So in order to find that sketch, we have to click here on loft one, go to sketch three, open that up. Okay, let's go to view it from this side. I'm just going to draw a bunch of center lines. Hit a 
escape, hit enter, and it started again. And then I'm going to put some points in here. One right there. One right there. One right there. And notice how an intersection or a horizontal relation comes up, except for that last one. It does know where that is, so. Okay, so it has all relations here. And let's see if that helps. Okay, let's edit loft one. Let's keep it even simpler, get rid of this sketch. Okay, here's this one control point. Bring it down here. Get a green check mark. Let's right click on this again, see if we can edit it. Ha ha. Now we can find get that control point to there, get this one up to there, delete connector, so we can go with this one too, right click, uh, keep running into that. Okay, so I want to right, right click and show all connectors. Delete that one. So I only want six so that it lines up with my hexes nicely. Okay, right, right click here, delete connector. that right click and delete it and it looks like I've got looks like I've got six connectors looks good and now let's put in another sketch this one right here and oh it really put that on very nicely so working with those connectors can be kind of painful difficult sometimes but it will make things look pretty nice sometimes. So it's similar to how I had it before. Let's go back to that loft one more time and play around with the start and end constraints. I showed you what happens when we have a normal to profile end constraint. It will change this to come straight off of that face. But for the start constraint, I think I'll stick with default. But the end constraint, I want it to be normal to the profile. Notice how that straightened things up just a little bit. And there was too much of a, a dip in here. And so uh, I can even change a little bit more of the angle if I so desire here. But I won't play with it any longer. I'll leave that to you to mess around with if you so desire. So that looks a whole lot better and a very nice, smooth transition. Okay, now we're going to make another loft. Go from loft to boss base. I'm going to go in here and go to this loft one. And I want sketch four. And I want it to go to sketch five. That's it. Just do that one thing. And that was not too bad. The circles can be easy to work with, especially if you only do one at a time. So it looks like it really hit all the control points perfectly, which is not always easy to do. It went from about 45 degrees up to something that was 45 degrees. Great. Let's see all the control points. 
connectors. Uh, it divvied them up in a nice fashion all the way around and perfectly aligned them to our profile sketch. Don't expect this to happen every time. But it worked out very nicely in this case. Now considering there should be the same number of connectors on this profile as on this profile, it should work out also pretty well. So let's go to Lofted Boss Base and then choose under Loft 2, Sketch 5, and then Sketch 6 as well. And that was as easy as... Wait, hold, hold on a sec. It's all twisted. Look at that. And it kind of twisted around and stuff. It is kind of cool looking when you look at it that way, but uh, that's not what we were hoping for. So we have to go in and change the control points again. And the problem is that this one in this corner went over here. So we just move this over to there. And a lot of it depends simply on which point was clicked first in the creation of the cross section. At this point, we are nearly done. Just wanted to put in some fillets. And it was asked how to do a face fillet. Just click on the face and any of the edges connected to the face will be filleted. Now notice how when I clicked on these, it stopped actually showing the preview. Must be that uh, what we have is too large or too small or some kind of problem with the geometry that it's running into. So I'm going to right click here and clear all those selections and instead click on individual edges. Now, what happens when I go here? Okay. Uh-oh. That's the problem. One of these edges is fine, but two of these together is not. I'm going to go back, clear these selections, and try this one more time, doing these first. See if there's a problem. Oh, it doesn't like that. Oh, it's got 40 millimeters, that's why. So I'm going to do this set first. Just be done with that. Then I'm going to do another set of fillets. Oh, did that face there. I just wanted to show you the edge filleting here and how it, once I did the other fillets here, these ones propagate all the way down there. And I can do a face fillet here. And now that should come in very nicely. And one more thing is kind of bothersome, and that's the fact that all of these planes that I made are still visible and um, occluding things that we want to look at. So I'll just go in there and hide them. And then it looks like there's also a temporary axis there. Okay. And now it looks like we have our Phillips insert. In this video we started with our standard extruded boss base with a basic hex, but then we learned how to put these planes in, then created sketches on each of these planes. So we did a lot of work before we did any additional 3D solid making. Then we tried making one loft that would go through all of them. Well, it didn't exactly bring out the shapes we wanted and became very complex. So we broke it down into three lofts. 
this one and we looked at how the uh, start and finish options made things change their geometry. Then we went from a circle to a cruciform and then from one large cruciform to another one and had to work hard at making the connectors work for us but once we were able to delete them and move them and make additional points on the circle everything began to work out and made it look good. Well I hope this helped and I'm sure that you'll be able to assemble these and I'll show you some different techniques in the next video for that.